time to get started again. Our next speaker is going to be Stephanie Arsenal again, but this time, everybody's favorite, Bay Anchovies. Anchovies. <laughs> Okay, so for those who have been in this room, I'm Stephanie Arsenault, for those who are new. Um, I'm a PhD student in the Chen Lab at Stony Brook, and today I'll be talking about the spatial temporal dynamics of suitable spawning habitat for bay anchovy in the Hudson River. So a little bit about the Hudson River estuary if you're not familiar. Um, it's a partially mixed tidal estuary that stretches 246 kilometers from New York City to Albany. Um, it's home to more than 200 different fish species and provides critical spawning um, and nursery habitat. Um, and like this session has been talked about already, it has this great um, long-term monitoring program. So of course, like many other aquatic ecosystems, the Hudson River has been subject to climate change. Um, so water temperatures in the estuary have risen since the 1930s with a 0.3 degree in Celsius increase since 1987. Um, and estuarine temperatures are projected to keep rising under various climate change scenarios. In addition to temperature, we have sea level rise in the estuary. Um, sea level rise has caused the mouth of the estuary to rise by 74 millimeters since 1987. Um, this has been linked to increases in estuarine salinity, um, and of course, sea level is going to continue. So a little bit about the Hudson River Biological Monitoring Program. I won't go into a ton of detail because a lot of other talks have covered it already. Um, but it's a monitoring program of the Hudson River from Battery Park in New York City up to Albany. It began in response to power plants being built along the Hudson River and evaluating the potential negative side effects. Um, it provides data on the abundant stage structure and spatial temporal distribution of thinfish species, and it does so through three main components, the Long River, the Beach Seine, and the Fall Juvenile Survey. Um, and I'll be focusing on data from the Long River Survey. It also includes water quality data from the Water Quality Survey um, and a couple other supplemental survey programs. And this figure is from Chang et al. in 2023. It's a map of the Hudson River estuary divided into the 13 different regions that are sampled by the HRBMP. So going into Bay Anchovy, um, there are a small coastal species found along the Atlantic coast. They only get to be about 10 centimeters. Um, they're very cute. This figure is not to scale, obviously. <laughs> um, they're commonly the most abundant ichthyoplankton in mid-Atlantic bite estuaries. Um, the Hudson River estuary serves at the northernmost extent of the species range, so they would go all the way down to the Gulf of Mexico, up to the Hudson River estuary. They're a significant part of the Hudson River estuary community. They're forage fish, they're at the base of the food chain, um, and are a critical prey item for you know commercially important species such as bass. <coughs> and they feed mostly on zooplankton. Um, they are a very short-lived species. They can live two, three years, but it's typically only around two, so very short lifespan. <laughs> So a little bit about their spawning behaviors in the estuary. So adults enter the lower estuary in late May and spawning starts in June and continues through August. They're pelagic cereal spawners. They spawn in the main channel of the estuary. Um, they spawn at night um, and they are spawning in the Battery and Yonkers regions with salinity greater than 10 PSU. So the lower southernmost regions of the estuary with the more um, marine conditions. And spawning is temperature dependent and peaks between 26 and 28 degrees Celsius, which you would expect um, in the summer. So going into the suitable spawning habitat, um, this has not been quantified for bay anchovy. I feel like as a species, they've been a little overlooked. Um, and of course, dynamic environmental variables are gonna impact um, the distribution and abundance of bay anchovy eggs um, and dictate where adults are spawning. And of course, um, what are the potential impacts of climate change? So the two objectives of the study are to identify the key environmental variables um, influencing bay anchovy, um, suitable spawning habitat use and distribution within the Hudson River estuary, and develop habitat suitability index models to hind now and forecast changes in the suitable habitat um, and distribution within the estuary. So the data that I'm using is two components of the HRBMP, the Long River Survey and the Water Quality Survey. 
The LRS began in 1974 and continued through 2017, sampling mid-March through mid-October. Sampling was conducted during the day and at night using an empty benthic sled and a tucker trawl. Um, and this survey specifically was designed to monitor early life stages of fish species. So the perfect survey to look at egg abundance. And the environmental data comes from the water quality survey, which began in 1974 and continued through 2018. Weekly sampling, May through November, excuse the typo, um, and it looked at uh, temperature, conductivity, and dissolved oxygen. Um, and there was an important methodology change in 1982. Um, they switched from sampling concurrently with the finfish surveys, um, and then switched to sampling at 65 fixed stations spaced approximately every